Now available in paperback and e-readers, The Temptation of John Haynes. Given to temptation, pick up this action-packed African-American paranormal romance. Get The Temptation of John Haynes in paperback and e-readers today. White supremacist and founder of the alt-right movement, Richard Spencer, shocked the world by endorsing Joe Biden for president. Now, this is a major surprise for many who are a part of the alt-right and the Republican Party, because many in the alt-right thought that your Richard Spencer would endorse Donald Trump, just like he did in 2016. Now, your Richard Spencer reasons that he's going to vote for Biden and the straight Democratic ticket because he believes that liberals are more competent people. Now, when I take a critical examination of that statement, it shows me how your Richard Spencer understands the bigger picture as related to the institution of white supremacy. And he, when he looks, says that liberals are more competent, they are more competent at meeting his needs and helping to support his agenda. Now, that's really shown by another one of Richard Spencer's statements later on that I read in an article on Newsweek, and that statement is that the MAGA alt-right movement is over. So, in Richard Spencer's eyes, the movement of the alt-right is over, and because the movement of the alt-right is over, what he's looking to do as an individual is monkey branch over to the left arm of white supremacy and look to try to gain access to the liberals who are in power over there in an effort to try to get tangibles for himself. Now, according to your Richard Spencer, he alleges that Trump is an obvious disaster and now that because he believes Trump is an obvious disaster, the paradigm that he had for gaining access to that power from white supremacy, he sees the flaws in it. And because he saw the flaws in that model he was looking to gain access to power from white supremacy has flaws, this is why he's looking to discontinue his relationship with Donald Trump. So in some ways, your Richard Spencer is hypergamous. He now sees that his access to resources from a Trump presidency are looking like they're coming to an end. And because his access to resources and access to elevating white supremacy are coming to an end with Donald Trump, he's looking to sever his relationship with Donald Trump. Now, this is what your Richard Spencer wrote on Twitter that shows me how he really understands how white supremacy is about maintaining power for white people, and it's about maintaining giveaways, goodies, and givebacks like Professor Black Truth talks about as related to the institution of white supremacy and elevating white people to a high social status here in America. So Richard Spencer sees the bigger picture as related to white supremacy. He sees the MAGA alt-right movement not being able to meet the needs of him and his white supremacist and white nationalist followers and ensuring that they have a very comfortable lifestyle and that the Trump presidency will not deliver on the goods of tangibles to those white supremacists in maintaining their privileged life as white people. So he's looking to end that relationship with Trump and now he's looking to move over to the left arm of white supremacy and now he's looking to have another day in the sun and recover and return in a new form. This is what Richard Spencer has stated on Twitter. He's planning on returning in a new form. So what he wants to do is change his message so that it no longer appeals to people on the far right or the alt right. Now he wants to change his message so that it appears to those on the far left. So what he's looking to do now, again, is monkey branch from one arm of white supremacy to the other. And that's the thing that a lot of people don't really understand about the big picture as related to this endorsement of Joe Biden. This is what Richard Spencer wants to do is he wants to fade into the background, join all of the other racist white moderates and white leftists, 
and woke far white leftists and them be able to push his insidious in information and propaganda out here regarding white supremacy. And he believes that Joe Biden would be a better candidate to help support his platform because Joe Biden's policies in the past have practically benefited many white supremacists like himself. Policies like the drug laws that talked about how crack cocaine and powder cocaine had different penalties. Policies like the 1994 crime bill. Policies like the three strikes and your outlaw. All of these policies benefited many of these white supremacists because it allowed them to have that smooth world where they could have a privileged lifestyle and blacks could remain at the bottom of society. So as long as black people remained inside of the Biden built in prison industrial complex, your people like Richard Spencer benefited. And Richard Spencer, seeing again the MAGA Trump train as he sees it coming to an end, what he wants to do is jump on another gravy train in the hopes of securing tangibles for himself. Now, your Joe Biden has denounced your Richard Spencer and denounced his endorsement, but I'm believing that your Joe Biden is only doing that publicly, but privately, I believe your Joe Biden is really taking a serious look at Richard Spencer and his supporters. And then the reason why I believe he's looking at Richard Spencer and his supporters is because this is probably going to be a very close race, and he's looking at all of those supporters and seeing a way to close the gap between himself and Donald Trump. Moreover, your, your Joe Biden probably is looking at your Richard Spencer and his supporters because each one of those voters he goes out and gets for Richard Spencer is one less black vote that he does not need. Because if he can go out here and get the support of evangelicals and people like white nationalists like Richard Spencer, then he can gain a larger block of white voters. And if he gets a larger block of white voters, then he only has to give tangibles to white people. And that's something Joe Biden hasn't wanted to do for black people, is support a black agenda, support black tangibles like reparations, or and support tangible policy changes that benefit black people. And you can best believe that Joe Biden would probably covertly take that endorsement of Richard Spencer because he does not want to give tangibles to black people. When we look at the Biden campaign and how it has practically ignored black people and still continues to take black people for granted, it shows that this would probably be an opportunity that your Joe Biden probably would want to capitalize on. Now, he has disavowed Richard Spencer and has declined his endorsement in public, but I probably think that he probably, probably privately wants to get that endorsement because that means he gets the support of a lot of these white males, which is the core voter block that your Joe Biden wants, white females, another voting block that he wants, and those voting blocks are extremely important in an election where things will possibly get very tight. So I think about this whole endorsement by Richard Spencer, and it's something that he's doing strategically, and he's doing it strategically because he wants to maintain the institution of white supremacy, an institution that has been knocked to its knees by black people and people all over the world with the protests of George Floyd. We have watched white supremacy take a lot of body blows left and right and has practically been sent crashing to the ground in the last few months of the fourth year of the Trump presidency. And in this fourth year of the Trump presidency, one of the biggest supporters of Donald Trump, Richard Spencer, sees a, almost a KO punch coming to white supremacy, so he wants to try to find a way to get white supremacy back up on its feet, and 
he believes the best way to get white supremacy back on its feet is with an endorsement of Joe Biden. Because when it comes down to your Richard Spencer, Richard Spencer is all about power, and he's all about maintaining the power of white supremacy, preserving the institution of white supremacy here in America, and he doesn't care if it's with Donald Trump or Joe Biden. As long as white supremacy is intact, he can lobby white supremacy for its giveaways, givebacks, and freebies, and that's what he wants to maintain, continuing to get access to, is access to those giveaways, goodbacks, and freebies, and these privileges that white supremacists benefit from in a white supremacist society by being elevated to a higher social status in, in that society created and maintained, protected and preserved by white supremacists and their white supremacist supporters. So that's what Richard Spencer is all about. He sees the right arm of white supremacy, the alt-right, getting ready to break and now he wants to try to empower the left arm so it can continue to fight, even though it has been knocked down to its knees. He sees white supremacy in a weak position, and he wants to strengthen white supremacy. He wants to protect white supremacy, and that's what he's trying to do, because he knows that if white supremacy goes down, then he won't be able to get that access to white power, and he won't be able to be able to say, because I said so. And that's what he's trying to protect. Again, monkey branching from one arm to the other. And he made this endorsement because he's looking to adapt. And he's looking to adapt because he understands when he returns in a new form, it may, it may, not, it may be on the left side of white supremacy, but the message will still be the same old anti-black racism and the same old anti-black narratives. So that's why black people have to understand if they want to go out here and vote, they have to understand it has to be about tangibles because your Richard Spencer is looking for tangibles and that's what he's looking to give Joe Biden in exchange for his vote. Your Richard Spencer looks at the big picture and says, I'm going to endorse the candidate who's going to get me tangibles. It doesn't matter whether he's on the left or the right, I'm going to get my tangibles for my votes, and I'm going to get those tangibles, whether it be overtly, with an overt endorsement, or covertly, because if you think Joe Biden isn't really thinking about entertaining this guy, you're foolish, because he probably is going to entertain him under the table, and then he's going to go get those votes, because, again, these voters are very important to him, because he, if he can get more white votes, he doesn't have to rely so heavily on the black vote. And if he gets more white votes, that means he doesn't have to offer any tangibles to black people. So that's why black people holding their vote is extremely important. And Richard Spencer understands that the black vote is starting to pull back because they see the importance of tangibles. And that's why he also endorsed Joe Biden, because he wants to make sure that his group continues to get those tangibles. So that's why he wanted to go out here and make a deal with Joe Biden, because he understands if white people come together and vote for Joe Biden, they can get and get tangibles in exchange for that vote. That means black people won't get any tangibles at all. But black people have to hold on and hold back, because this is another desperate play, because Richard Spencer sees, again, how weak white supremacy is, and that's why he's offering Joe Biden his endorsement, because they want to hold up the institution of white supremacy. And that's what he wants to do, is hold this institution up so that whites can continue getting these tangibles, because he knows that if the black vote stays home in large numbers, the left is going to lose the election, and if the left loses the election, then they don't get access to resources and tangibles from what they see is a failing presidency and access to resources because you can't get resources in chaos. You can only get resources allocated to you in a government that is structured in order. And that's what your Richard Spencer meant by saying 
oh, the liberals are more competent. He wants a structure in place that will ensure that he will continue to gain access to tangibles, and he wants to gain, continue getting those resources distributed to him and his friends, and that's what he wants to do, whether it be on the right arm of white supremacy or the left arm, he wants to make sure the institution of white supremacy stays in place, because it doesn't matter if they're left or they're right, they're all about elevating white first, and white first is the thing that, that your Richard Spencer and what those on the left and the right are both all about. And that's why B1 black people need to understand you have to focus on getting tangibles for yourself because the name of the game is tangibles. And if you don't get any tangibles, then there's no reason for you to come out and vote in this election. If you want to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. And if you want to try some of my SJS Direct publications, you can find those on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.